So, good morning, friends. So, I was given this topic in Hyderabad Critique in 2022. So, I couldn't attend in person. So, I'm just sending this recording. So, thank organizers for having me. But I'm told my opponent also had to drop out uh, from attending this. So, possibly this debate may not happen. If it happens, I'm just sending this video across. So, the debate I had was against my opponent, Dr. Sumitre. Uh, so, my topic that I had to defend was NIV is superior in respiratory failure as compared to HFNO. So, I had to talk on NIV as the way to go in respiratory failure. So, I was talking in defense of NIV. Uh, so, the way I would approach this debate is to look into the physiological basis of NIV. So, when you talk about NIV, for all the trainees who are listening to this, so there's a separate video on NIV. I'm sure you can go through that. So, the there are five elements in which NIV is uh, beneficial. So, one is obviously it improves the alveolar ventilation. It is shown beyond doubt that it significantly improves, improves the alveolar ventilation and reduces or mitigates or circumvents the shunt fraction and recruits the alveoli. Thereby, it will circumvent the shunt fraction, which is the commonest cause of respiratory failure. The second important aspect is it significantly reduces the work of breathing and improves the oxygenation as well. That's the third. And most importantly, the advantage of NIV is it is shown to have significant effect on heart failures by reducing the afterload, which I'm sure all the listeners would agree that HFNO fails to do this. So it is not it, HFNO is not a modality which has an effect on reducing the afterload on the heart. And HFNO also is not helpful in stabilizing the chest wall, especially in a trauma situation where you may have a flail chest. NIV has a very important role in stabilizing the chest wall. Or you may have conditions where there is reduced minute ventilation, that neuromuscular weakness, where you need support for the muscles to function. So respiratory muscle weakness, where NIV also can be used as an adjunct uh, when there is this sort of a situation. Stabilization and enhancing your chest wall activity also, NIV is helpful. So this is the physiological rationale. Just for trainees benefit, like HFNO only provides oxygen at a very high flow and there is no effect of HFNO on various pressures. So this is a very, uh, this is these are the pressures that every trainee is expected to know. There is PMUS is the whole respiratory muscle work that respiratory system puts in place. And these respiratory muscles have to put this effort to overcome certain pressures in the lung. So there is something called elastic pressure called as PEL. And lung uh, presents itself with some resistance. And your whole respiratory effort should overcome the lung resistance. That we call it as PRS. And there is this baseline pressure within the lung, which is alveolar pressure, which is called P threshold. So any of the respiratory effort that we are putting in to optimize our ventilation to optimize oxygenation is with an intent to overcome this elastic pressure, resistive pressure and threshold pressure within the lung. And this has to overcome and this should exceed your alveolar opening pressure. So all these pressures we have to overcome for the, uh, for the alveolar openings to happen. And the P must be minus alveolar opening pressure. So in essence, your P must plus alveolar opening pressure is what determines your whole ventilatory functions where E stands for elastance, V stands for volume, R stands for resistance, and V dot stands for inspiratory flow, and you need intrinsic peak. So this is in quintessence about the variables that are involved in optimizing your ventilation and oxygenation, where your effort will be to overcome these pressures within the lung. Elastance, volume is needed, and pressures that are generated should overcome the resistance, and the inspiratory flows that you generate should overcome and should be optimal. And you have your own intrinsic peak that keeps your alveoli open. So this, so your whole NIV, the concept of NIV is keeping in mind as to how it has a bearing on overcoming these pressures, which I'll show you in next couple of slides, which HFNO has nothing to do with any of these pressures, which means to say physiologically, it falls apart in a big way because it does not have any rationale in overcoming these pressures to optimize your oxygenation, to improve your alveolar ventilation, to reduce your work of breathing. So when you talk about NIV, it has different components. You have CPAP, you have pressure support, you have BiPAP, NIP, or non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, which are used interchangeably. So what it does is, obviously I mentioned already, it reduces after load. But the recruitment, what I showed you, that NIV helps you to recruit alveoli 
on the same time it reduces this elastin pressure so i'm only trying to say how niv acts on overcoming this elastin pressure resistive pressure and p thresholds so by recruiting it reduces the elastin pressure and by providing the peep extrinsic peep it reduces or it overcomes the p threshold which obviously your ventilation has to overcome and most significantly niv helps in reducing the shunt fraction shunt is where alveoli is not participating in the gas exchange so that is so it reduces the shunt fraction and ipap inspiratory positive airway pressure which we have spoken multiple times you can look into the other videos so inspiratory positive airway pressure where we expect this to play an important role in copd how does it work it increases your alveolar tidal volume helps it to reduce psco2 where hfno has absolutely no role in its ability to increase your alveolar tidal volume to reduce the psco2 it increases the surfactant production from your pneumocytes which optimizes the alveolar function and it reduces your elastic pressure and resistant pressure thereby optimizes optim uh, optimal ventilation thereby reduces your respiratory effort and by reducing work of breathing and all these pressures have no relevance in hfno so goes on to show how niv is superior and physiologically more sound in overcoming this elastic pressure resistive pressure and thresholds pressure in reducing your work of breathing can happen only with niv and we have this various uh, components which you can tweak to optimize your pressures we are we won't dwell into details you have ipap you have pressure support you have cpap and epap which you could optimize to increase your tidal volume to reduce your co2 and overcome elastance and resistance and now coming to what physiological rationale and benefit in various causes of respiratory failure as i said this is the shunt where you see this alveoli not participating in ventilation and in shunt just giving hfno will not help because hfno will not recruit this collapsed alveoli it is only with positive pressure with niv which can recruit this alveoli and reverse the shunt fraction so where you circumvent this and then you have this situation ventilation perfusion mismatch where there is no perfusion happening and there is a dead space issue even here niv has a better role than in hfno then you have conditions where diffusion so these are the causes of respiratory failure which every trainee needs to know the predominant causes of respiratory failure in icu is the shunt the pulmonary edema pneumonia aspiration all this is the shunt and dead space is where you have pulmonary embolism and the copd all this have problems with the dead space where niv plays a role diffusion impairment is where you have interstitial lung disease where niv has a better role or you have a bp mismatch problem so before niv this is a diagrammatic or schematic representation how alveoli looks and how your perfusion looks but after niv how this alveoli opens up and your perfusion matching happens much better and there is improvement in the ventilation perfusion ratio so all in all physiologically from the pressure standpoint at the basic physiological understanding it's it holds promise that how it circumvents or overcomes you are other pressures like elastic pressures resistive pressures and threshold pressures and how even from the clinical standpoint it has a bearing on improving out so the improving the oxygenation by mitigating the shunt fraction by optimizing ventilation perfusion maybe helping in diffusion and in respiratory muscle weakness where it has an effect then you have problems with hypoventilation so hypoventilation hfno cannot make a difference so there are a lot of hypoventilation disorders where you need a sort of a positive support from outside and niv is the uh, standard of care in these hypoventilation disorders and minute ventilation hfno has absolutely no role because it has no bearing on strengthening or optimizing or enhancing your muscle function so like neuromuscular myasthenia or motor neuron so on and so forth where you may have to use this as a bridge only niv stands to hold promise and most importantly niv is a quality indicator so when even when you look the it has been time tested where they put it as a quality indicator that in copd patients niv has to be used in 95% of the copd patients who come to you niv is the one that should be used as a trial to maintain the quality if you do not use niv and you give hfno it means it's a breach in the quality indicator so so niv is time tested and it remains to stay here with regards to quality indicator as well and this is just the statistics as to how uh, we have been using our niv and mac and niv is backed by multiple robust studies so for pulmonary edema there are 23 randomized controlled trials 
and three meta analysis which has proved its metal in showing its impact on influencing outcomes in copd there are 14 randomized controlled trials obviously i wouldn't we wouldn't dwell into the details you can refer to other videos in hypoxic re uh, respiratory failure there are eight randomized these are all high quality randomized controlled trials which are there to show the effectiveness of uh, your niv and even in immunocompromised patients there are three randomized controlled trials and multiple observational studies which has shown its benefit in uh, influencing outcomes with niv and there is grade 1a recommendation which means strong recommendation with a good scientific evidence in copd and in cardiogenic pulmonary edema the guidelines suggest use CO, uh, niv as the first tool in respiratory failure due to copd and cardiogenic pulmonary edema and hfno does not figure in grade 1a recommendation and grade 2b recommendation in hypoxic respiratory failure and to end my talk I'm, when i'm uh, obviously debating with sumit this is the latest trial that that latest review article not trial sorry which is come in 3rd november which is just released uh, around couple of days back in nejm where the the title is non invasive respiratory support for adults with acute respiratory failure i request all the audience to read this review article where it says niv is the way to go in cardiogenic pulmonary edema copd and hypoventilation disorder due to obesity and mild to moderate acute respiratory failure and most importantly what i have not touched is even after extubating the patients on copd to prevent reintubation niv is the way to go and niv is the way to go even to prevent reintubation in mild to moderate respiratory failure and even in moderate to severe acute respiratory failure to prevent reintubation niv is the way to go and this is the nice pictorial representation or a summary in nejm that was that has just come two days back i request all the audience to read this and uh, and concur with me that niv is the way to go so summary of my talk is niv proven to have sound physiological rationale which i showed as to how it plays with the pressures and tries to circum overcome the alveolar opening pressure by dealing with your elastic pressure resistance pressure and threshold pressure and niv is proven safety in saving lives for last one century it's more than 100 years since niv got introduced in 1920s so a century track record and you you have at least 55 trials plus trial which has shown influencing favorable outcome in pulmonary edema copd and hypoxic respiratory failure more than 55 good quality practice changing trials that are existent to prove its benefit and even in pandemic it was shown as to how niv was superior to hfno because i'm sure most listeners would know like how hfno tried to create waves initially but then later on it was shown very clearly that niv was way better in at least conserving oxygen because hfno uses lot of oxygen at least in my state karnataka we uh, we lost out on uh, using hfno because it was depleting our oxygen reserves enormously and we had to change the uh, sort of strategy of using more niv which conserves oxygen better so even with regards to resource optimization it was proven in pandemic that niv was much better so i would end my first part of the debate with this uh, and obviously the rebuttal i would get 2 minutes uh, since it's a recorded version the rebuttal i would the way i would look at rebuttal is uh, when you look at all the florali trial i won't go into the details basically florali trial showed in non hypercapnic respiratory failure hfno versus conventional versus niv there was no difference in intubation rate and this was the only study where hfno had some benefit but then the margin or there was we could dwell into the details of this there were a lot of limitations um, but when you look at all the other studies that have come for meta analysis look at this meta analysis with uh, hfno if sumit is going to argue on hfno all the comparators are with conventional oxygen and there has been no big meta analysis or trials except florali which has compared apples to apples hfno compared with cot this is of no relevance hfno compared with cot no relevance and there are four meta analysis where again hfno compared with cot and all this compared with conventional oxygen therapy not with niv even in immunocompromised you see this trial comparing hfno with cot not with niv and post extubation respiratory failure again hfno not compared with niv hfno compared with conventional oxygen therapy so post surgical also hfno compared with cot so all respiratory failures to take hfno is only compared with conventional oxygen therapy not with niv so hfno is not here to it cannot compete with niv and there is and it only holds promise in a very limited group of patients for intensive care niv is the way to go forward 
So I would end my debate with this picture. So 1994, we got the Forrest Gump and still that remains the classic. And 2022, although you make 2022, it's almost uh, 20 years after this, you come out with a movie, transformation, transform movie with this uh, Lal Singh Chedda and you know how it became a huge flop. So HFNO is nothing but Lal Singh Chedda. And uh, and I don't think anyone in the audience would want to follow this Joker Amir Khan. I don't personally like him yeah, because he demint our uh, whole medical fraternity. So we should shun this uh, 2022 or whatever we are talking and we should adopt what is time tested. So thank you one and all.